This training video is brought to you by K-Alliance. K-Alliance provides high quality instructor led training videos for desktop, IT and soft skills. Visit us online at www.kalliance.com to sign up for your free seven day trial. Be sure to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you for watching and we hope you learned something new. Real videos, real learning, real success. In this demonstration, we're going to look at the process for creating partitions and volumes and some of the management aspects that we have when dealing with hard drives in Windows 8. Now, as we've talked about, we've got two management tools, uh, the disk management utility, uh, as well as uh, the disk part command line utility. And we didn't include any Windows PowerShell commands, uh, but uh, again, you know, this is done infrequently enough, I think, that the graphical utility or disk part uh, will, uh, will suffice. So let's open up disk management. And again, there's a couple of different ways that we can do this. Uh, one way would be actually to go into control panel. Okay. I like to show you different, different ways. So going into control panel, system and security, and then administrative tools. Okay, actually, if we back up one, it would be create and format hard disk partitions. If you click on that link, it would actually take you uh, to disk management. Okay? Or you can go in to the computer management utility inside administrative tools, and disk management is a smaller part of, of that. Okay, so just it, to be clear, there are a few different ways uh, to get there. So here's our disk management snap in. We'll start just by creating a, a, a simple volume. Well, actually, we've created a simple volume with the uh, F drive. Uh, and, and so that's, as we saw, was something fairly easy to do. You can just right click unallocated space, new simple volume, and then we specify the, the size of that uh, simple volume. So let's make this one D103, get five gigs, the G drive. Call it, call it sales, hit next and finish, okay? Uh, and then it will actually create and immediately open up the sales drive. That's roughly about five gigabytes and we've got the uh, additional space there at the end, okay? Now, if I wanna resize that volume, I can right click the volume and I can choose to extend the volume. Extend the volume and it'll ask me, okay, where do I want to extend it? Now you do have additional disk options or I can just extend it using space on that same disk. So let's say, well, I want to extend it another, uh, you know, another roughly five gigs. Next hit finish and immediately it expands it. And so now it's a 10, 10 gig uh, partition okay, or volume. If you right click a volume and say you want to extend it onto an additional drive, Right, so disk two here, we add in the disk space from disk two. Now notice what's going to happen. I'm gonna hit next and hit finish. It's going to warn me that because I'm now creating a spanned volume, it's going to convert it to dynamic. Now the reason that it's warning me is because if I was doing a dual boot, this would be very problematic for the other operating systems. So keep that in mind. Uh, although, albeit it's unlikely that you're gonna be doing uh, dual boots. So we'll go ahead and extend it and now notice you know that becomes a uh, now we've got this labeling of simple volumes versus span volume so both of these are the f drive if i now go into uh, my computer and look at my f drive it is there it is it is 20 gigs okay so it's two 10 gigabyte partitions or roughly you know 10 gigabyte uh, partition so when you extend a volume onto a different physical disk uh, it is going to, uh, it's actually going to create a spanned volume, all right? Let's open up uh, disk part just so we can see how to, whoops, that's not what we want to do. Just so we can see how, how to do this from the command line utility. Okay, so disk part. Uh, again, the very first thing we need to do is to select the disk that we want to work with. In this case, it's going to be disk three down here, the unallocated space. Uh, then we can create a partition. It's a primary partition versus an extended partition. Now it's partition because it's a basic disk. Okay? 
create partition size is going to be uh, equal to, and then this is in uh, this is in megabytes. So let's say ten thousand two hundred and forty. Okay. Succeeded in created, creating the partition. Now, if I say list partition on the selected disk, I've got a uh, reserve partition and then a primary partition of uh, ten uh, of ten gigabytes. Okay, so then I just need to select that partition, partition number two. Now it's the selected partition, and now I can work with it. And so one of those things would be format file system is equal to NTFS. Uh, the label that I want to use, uh, simple two, and we want to do a quick format. Okay? Hit enter, and it goes through now that process. Now, again, are you going to do this uh, when you're trying to <laughs> manage a single partition? I doubt it. Uh, but this can be done as a part of an unattended installation. Okay? Type in assign and it will assign a drive letter. Now, I could have said assign. In fact, we'll do this like that. Uh, whoops. Maybe I can't do that. Okay, I could have said assign and then specified a specific drive letter or a mount point. Otherwise, it's just going to use the next available, uh, the next available one, okay? So uh, anyway, so that, uh, that provides or that um, shows you how to create using both disk part and disk management. Uh, we have uh, extended a uh, extended a partition using uh, the disk management snap-in. Let's extend or resize a partition using uh, disk part. Okay, so actually quit here. We're going to list out the uh, different volumes, and notice that's going to show me all of uh, all of these things, uh, all of those that I, I want to deal with. So let's actually, we're going to go select volume six. We've got so many to deal with now. <laughs> so select volume six, and then we can shrink or extend. So let's do a shrink. Okay. Shrink desired, uh, and we'll just do it equal to 50 just for uh, example purposes. Okay. And that should work. Uh, that's 50 megabytes, you know, so now this uh, should have become, yep, it did 9.95 uh, gigabytes, all right? And extend uh, desired would be the exact same, exact same thing, all right? So again, just showing different ways uh, in which to, uh, to do that. We did a span volume. Let's actually get rid of some of these. These are, it's okay to delete these because we're in a test scenario. They don't have anything in them. Uh, anyway, so let's just delete uh, the volumes that we've created. Delete this last one. All right, uh, and then I just want to create a couple of the additional types of drives. So, uh, for instance, I could right-click here and uh, and potentially, well, dynamic, add a, add a mirror to a, an existing disk, or we can right-click and create a new mirrored volume. And when I create a new mirrored volume, I choose the other disk that I want to use as a mirror. I assign a drive letter or a, a, a file path, and we'll just leave that as is. It will again prompt me that it's going to convert it to dynamic. You might be thinking, wait, it was already dynamic. Yes, but it does switch back and forth here automatically. So the whole convert to dynamic is really a moot point now uh, in Windows 8. So it's going to create a software mirror, a RAID 1 uh, volume, assuming that I hit, there we go. Okay, <laughs> apparently I did. Uh, assuming that I hit OK, and I wasn't, I wasn't exactly sure there. All right, so a mirror is going to give me some redundancy uh, by uh, essentially just simultaneously writing information to two different, uh, two different places. Okay? And it is very easy either to add a mirror to an existing drive uh, or to create a mirror. Right? It, these are both the F drive. It is duplicate storage when you open up my computer. Uh, the F drive is going to show as 20 gigs. It is not going to show uh, as the combination of those two. All right? Spanned volume, or uh, excuse me, striped volumes. Go ahead and delete that. Uh, the the striped volume will be just slightly different. That's a RAID zero. Okay? That's going to require additional disk. 
we're going to add, uh, actually, let's get rid of that. And we're going to create uh, using 10 gigs. Oh, you know what? I'm sorry. I, I picked the wrong one there. Okay, so we want disk 2, 3, and 4, and we'd actually like uh, 20 gigs. You, you notice what happened there. Maybe, maybe, maybe we're not clear on what happened, but when I had initially this disk selected, all the disks have to be the same size. And so it, it bumped me down to using only 10 gigs on each drive because one of the drives only had 10 gigs. Okay? So we're going to create a Stripe volume, and this is going to be my data storage. This is very high-speed data storage because of the striping, uh, but no redundancy. Uh, and so you kind of have to be careful doing that. Um, that can actually be a little bit problematic. So that will, uh, if I lose one drive, in other words, I, I will lose everything on that volume. So logically, it's seeing it as a volume, and we're seeing the system kind of hang here a little bit each time we try to create. But Logically, it's seen it as a single volume, but physically, it's being stored across, uh, across multiple drives. And we can see that there's a little legend down below and the color indication as to which type of, uh, which type of volume that is. Uh, you know, earlier I had all these different volumes and different drive letters, and that kind of leads us into our final thing that we want to talk about, and that's a, that's a mount point. Uh, mount points provide more flexibility and give you uh, just more uh, simplicity. Really, you can create additional drives, you can install additional physical hard disk, uh, and still have everything show up in one logical folder structure. And I, I really think that's the way to go. Uh, programs can be told to install themselves into a folder, uh, but that folder is really representing a different partition or volume. Uh, it just makes things simpler, okay? So for data here, for instance, let's right click and say we want to change drive letter or path. We say, okay, it is the F drive. What I want to do is hit change, actually, excuse me, I want to hit add, and I want to mount it to an empty NTFS folder. So I'm going to browse over to the C drive, and I'm going to create a new folder and call it data storage, okay? So now you've actually just added that. So I'm going to go in and change drive letter and path again, and now I'm going to remove F. Now it's going to gripe at me because I, if you had a program installed on the F drive, then that program's no longer going to work. Okay, but since I just created it, this is no big deal. But now notice what's happening. I'm not getting an F drive, but when I go into the C drive, I've got a data storage location. Now it's listed in there. It shows up a different icon. It's listed as being 60 some odd gigabytes. You know, but when I access it, I'm accessing it just like I would access a normal folder, C data storage. Okay? And so, but anything in there is being thrown onto the Stripe volume that we've created. I'm not saying you'll do that with every partition, but that is certainly a simpler setup than me going into the computer details and seeing this huge list of, of drives. So we definitely want to consider the use of mount points instead of drive letters. All right, so there's a lot of information, different types of volumes, the different types of management, command line versus graphical management. That should get you ready for managing hard drives in the Windows 8 operating system. Now it's time for a pop quiz. You have run out of space on your hard drive and need to provide additional space without having to delete files. You purchase another hard drive and add it to the system. Which of the following volume types will you create by extending the existing volume onto the unallocated space of the new drive? A, simple volume. B, spanned volume. C, striped volume. D, mirrored volume. The answer B, a spanned volume, is correct. Spanned volumes utilize the sp storage space of multiple physical disks, but fill up the first disk prior to moving on to the second disk. Whereas a striped volume uses multiple storage space on, uh, or storage space on multiple disks, but allocates and uses the same amount of space across those drives consistently. A mirrored volume is an exact duplicate 
two simple volumes on two physical disks. And a simple volume is simply an amount of an area of storage space on a single drive. So in the question, when you are taking an existing simple volume and, ex and expanding it, extending it onto a different physical disk, you are creating a spanned volume. We hope you enjoyed this preview video. Please click on the like button below if you did and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Be sure to visit us at www.kalliance.com to sign up for your free seven day trial today. You could learn a lot in a week.